My first uh, question for you, Pastor Steve, is from, who's this from? Let me throw it up here. From Candy. She says, uh, could we consider that when President Trump submitted the deal of the Century Peace Plan to divide Israel in a two-state solution, by doing that, he touched the apple of God's eye, and we are being judged as a country for that. Um, it was on January 28th, and directly afterward, we saw big earthquakes in Utah, the trumpet from the statue of Moroni at the Mormon Temple fall, then the Idaho earthquake uh, that was large and in a strange place, and then the COVID-19 shutdown that we are living in. Um, she says, a giant timeout from the Lord and insane times, or do you think it completely does not have anything to do with God and is a chance for the new world order that George Bush number one was excited about? You know, uh, Candy, I, I, I don't think it necessarily has to do with the situation in Israel. One of the things that Americans don't understand about uh, the Israeli situation is that you have a large number of Palestinians who are living in, in what the news media calls the occupied territories, uh, the West Bank. Uh, Israel calls it Judea and Samaria. And um, there are only a couple of options that they've got as far as uh, uh, what happens with those areas in Israel. Um, uh, one of the options is to drive every one of those people out of there. And then where are they going to go? And, uh, you know, one of the, the things that the Israelis are dealing with is uh, they're kind of on a razor's edge as far as uh, keeping peace with all the uh, Muslim nations around them. And so driving the Palestinians out um, is not really a good option for the Israelis. And, and this is you know, something that just practically, that's, that's what the Israeli government is looking at. Another thing that you could do is you could annex those properties, uh, those, those areas. And Israel has done that. It is part of Israeli territory but they've given it over to the Palestinian people. And there's a reason, Candy, that they've done that. The reason that they've done that is because of demographics. Uh, the Palestinians have uh, households that have, uh, just in general, about six children per household. And when you're talking about the Israelis, the Jewish Israelis, uh, their demographics is much smaller. It's more like the United States, uh, two kids or less. And um, one of the things that would happen if they took all these people and made them uh, part of Israel, uh, you would have a situation where in, in the not too, you know, probably within 20 years, probably within 10 years, you'd have a situation where uh, the uh, Muslims would be able to outbreed the Israelis and take over the government. And then, you know, what happens to the Jews? They drive them into the sea. And uh, so that's not something, when you're, when you're talking about people in Israel, that's not a viable option for these guys. And so when you're, when you're looking at it, and I, I don't know where you're, where you're getting your information from uh, as far as there, there, there's kind of a, a flavor to what you, what you shared. I don't know what you're get, getting your information from, but that is not what the Israelis want to do. They, they don't want to drive these people out and they don't want them to be part of their society in the sense that they can vote in Israeli uh, elections. And so they are going along with President Trump's uh, proposals. Uh, they're, they're all for it. It's not the Israelis that aren't for it. It is the Palestinians that aren't for it. And um, that's, the, that's the situation that you've got on the ground over there uh, in Israel. The Israelis have uh, parts of... Uh, Judea and Samaria, as they, as they call them, and they're making sure that they keep those parts that they have uh, Israeli settlements in. But they don't want the Palestinians as a whole uh, to become part of Israeli society. And again, it's because of the demographics. That's why they cut off Gaza. Gaza used to be part of, of Egypt until Israel took it in a war. And the West Bank used to be part of uh, Jordan until they took it in a war again. And, and so um, they don't really want that to become part of Israel. And so, uh, you know, I, I doubt that uh, what, you know, when you look at uh, Trump's attitude towards the Israel, the Israeli, Israelis, by the way, far and above most of them, way, you know, large, large majority of the Israelis love President Trump. Yeah. They, they like this guy. And so I, I have some friends over in Israel, and, and they let me know this. Every time uh, you know, one of my friends talks to me, he's always talking about what Trump's done now and, 
and the you know, things that, that they like about him. They love it that he moved the uh, embassy from Tel Aviv up to Jerusalem. Gutsy move. I, actually, you know what? It wasn't even a gutsy move. It was a normal move. Right. It was a non-politician move. And uh, he moved it up there, and they just love him for it. Naming streets after him and, and that kind of thing. And, and so, uh, you know, you can, you can tell where I'm coming from with this whole thing. No, I don't think that these are as a uh, result of uh, Trump's policies with Israel. Um, I, I think they may be a result of our abandoning of God. And so I could see that happening, um, obviously. And so um, I, I, I don't know that I would tie it to the New World Order uh, under George Bush or, or anything like that. Um, I'm uh, pretty, you know, pretty much a little bit more straightforward than that. You abandon God, God ab- abandons you. Nation abandons God, God abandons the nation. And so um, we, we are getting the consequences of life without God in our culture and in our nation. And obviously, you know, we have Christians here and, and our lives are different in a, in a lot of different ways. But uh, many of the people in our country have no respect for God, no respect for morality, and all that stuff gets dumped off on us. And I think that God allows certain things to happen in a nation to get them to wake up, to open their eyes, and to look up and pay attention to God. I, I think that one of the cool things about this whole go, COVID thing, uh, in a lot of ways, I think it's overblown. But um, uh, again, I have parents that would be susceptible to this. And, and so if they were living with me, I would be a Nazi on this whole issue as far as who I was around because I wouldn't want them to get sick. And I'm, I, and I'm like that from far away, too. But there, there's a lot of stuff uh, about this that's, that's overblown, and government is taking way too many liberties uh, with, uh, with dealing with this issue, uh, especially with the numbers that are involved. And um, uh, I think that it is a precursor to some of the things that you, you, you see in the book of Revelation. If you'd have talked to me three months ago about the whole United States, the whole world being shut down and on lockdown on, on something that hasn't even killed as many people in our nation as the flu did this year, you guys. Um, if you'd have talked to me about that three months ago, I would have said, that's crazy. But here we are. Now imagine if we get a, a disease that's kind of Ebola-like in the, in the sense that it's not, um, uh, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're doing the numbers here, we don't know the actual numbers because we don't know how many people have had this disease. We know how many people have been tested for the disease and how many people actually have it. But we don't know how many people have actually had it in the, in the sense of, uh, they may have had it and not even known it. In any case, when you get those numbers together, um, that's going to drive down the percentages. And so right now it's right around 2%, uh, maybe 3%, depending on the, on the area that you're in, in the United States. And that's going to drive it down to less than 1% when we get all the numbers in. Um, that's comparable, again, to the flu. And I, again, I don't want to just compare it to the flu, but it is comparable as far as the infection rate. And um, if you get something that... Uh, Jesus talked about the wars and rumors of wars and pestilences in various places. You get something that does 5% of the population, like a real 5% or 10% or 30% of the population, something, something like the Black Plague uh, in uh, Europe. You, are, you think this is a lockdown and this is, man, this is crazy that they're, that they're doing it this over this situation. Imagine what they do when we get more plagues that are coming in. And Jesus said more plagues are coming. And so, you know, we're living in an interesting time. So um, I think that uh, God, I know that God is using this to, to wake people up. When, when we look at the numbers of people that are watching our, uh, our broadcast online, um, it's way more people than show up to church on Sunday, way more, like better than double, maybe even three times as many. I was saying three or four, yeah. Yeah, and, and so... It's, it, it's, you know, that's obviously an indication that, that uh, people are hungry, people are thirsty, and, and they're, they're looking to the Lord. That's a good thing. Yep. So. All right.